Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch and I'm here at a shopping development in Bradley County, Tennessee, Cleveland, Tennessee. And at the shopping development, there's a Target, a Books A Million, an Old Navy, and down in that direction are several restaurants. There's a barbecue restaurant, there's a Tex-Mex kind of restaurant, there's an Asian restaurant, Chinese restaurant, uh, just lots of places here. And in addition to all of that, there is a Tesla version four supercharger array. And there's 16 stalls here, which is really awesome, including one right here, which is accessible. So you, if you have a wheelchair, you can get in and out of your vehicle. And the one right next to it is good for, if you have a truck like a F-150 Lightning or a Cybertruck with a trailer, you can pull through with your trailer attached and get to this one which is really nice. And in addition to all that, because it's a version four supercharger, it has long cables. You know, my Mustang Mach-E will charge on version three and version four superchargers. Most of the superchargers you find in the world are, or in the United States are version three, and they have very short cables and it's hard to get them to attach to my car without pulling up over the curb or parking cattywampus. But these fancy version four chargers have nice long cables, so I'm going to try them out. Of course, Tesla uses the North American charging standard or NAX connector. And my Ford uses the CCS connector for DC fast charging. And it came with an adapter. This 2025 Mustang Mach-E came with a NAX or North American charging standard to CCS adapter. So let's see how that works. So from what I understand, you're supposed to connect the adapter first. Make sure it clicks into place, which it did, before plugging in to the CCS port on my car. I'll do that now. And I believe, I could be mistaken, but I believe I should be able to plug and charge. I have the uh, Ford Pass app set up with my credit card in it, and I believe on a Tesla supercharger, which isn't it lovely how this cable reached all the way to this port with no problem at all? I believe I should be able to plug and charge. Let's see. Okay, so it did not plug and charge. So I'm going to see if I can get it to go with the Tesla app on my phone, which I've never done before. So that'll be interesting. Find a charger. Charge here, choose a post number. Now these posts are not labeled, but I think I'm on 2D. Selected posts may be out of order. I'm gonna, I'm gonna How about that? I went to the one that's out of order. So now that it's disconnected, let's see if that one gets back in order. Oh, still says that one's out of order. So I'm going to try to just hook up to the one next to it and see what happens. Well, I don't know. I'll tell you in a second. Okay. Yeah, they were saying out of order. Uh, 
I had, uh, oh, that one's going. Just D, which I guess that's 2D. Okay. 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2, 2D is out. So, but yeah, I'm charging now. So switching to a different charger, 2C, it worked. It plugged and charged. I didn't have to use the app, but I did need to use the app to see that the charger wasn't working. I guess I could have just tried a different one. Sorry. Oh, 130. Mm -hmm. That's the highest it's ever charged at. 131. So right now we're charging at 112 kilowatts but for a minute there we were charging at 136 which is the fastest this car's ever charged uh this car ramps down as the battery gets fuller and we're at 42 percent now so we're down to 112 but it was at 136 for a moment which is i thought this car was limited to 115 but maybe i'm mistaken maybe it's limited to 150 but we definitely did 136 for a little while there so that was pretty cool here at the Tesla version four supercharger in Cleveland, Tennessee. This is at I-75 exit 27. It's only about a block or so off the interstate. So with all the amenities here, all the places where you can shop or eat and 16 chargers, including one accessible and one for trucks with trailers. I think this is an excellent option for charging in this area if you're on a trip going through here. This 2025 model Mustang Mach-E has a small front trunk or frunk. So I just keep all my charging stuff in here. My adapter for t Tesla DC superchargers, my uh, level one charger, I keep all that stuff up here. And it, even though it's a small frunk, it has plenty of room for all of that stuff. I have an adapter for Tesla or Nax AC chargers too that I haven't used yet, but if I'm ever in a place where I need to use a Tesla AC charger, I'll be ready. We're not traveling right now. We're just trying to kind of get our bearings for when we do take a road trip in this car. And so we came here to this version four charger because we knew it had the longer cables. And other than one of the 16 being out and us picking the one that was out, it's really good. Just got a notification from Ford Pass that I was charged $7.70. We charged from 29% to 44%. It went really fast. Uh, I don't need to fill it up to 80% because we're just running back home where I can put it on a very economical level two charger in the garage. But it's good to know that these Tesla chargers work and they work with the Ford Pass app. So I'm plug and charge. I just plug in and it goes as long as I'm not on a defective charger. It's crazy that there's 16 chargers here. One of them is out and that's the one I picked. But anyway, once I got on one of the 15 that's working, it worked really well. So here's the big transformer. It looks like it's only a 1500 KVA to handle all 16 of these fast chargers. And here's the rest of the electrical boxes around the charge station. It's a beautiful place and an excellent place to stop if you're heading down I-75 through Tennessee.